the next part comes to how you design and conduct a case study. So the advantage of case study research design is that you can focus on specific and interesting cases. This may be an attempt to test a theory with a typical case or it can be specific but topic that is of interest. Research should be through and note-taking should be meticulous and systematic. The first foundation of case study is the subject and relevance. So in a case study, you are deliberately trying to isolate a small study group, one individual case or one particular population. So again, for example, we'll take it here, statistical analysis may have shown that birth rates in excess countries are increasing, or we can take India, we can take Africa, or we can take China, whichever country you belong to, we can take that country. A case study on one or two specific countries become a powerful and focused tool for determining the social and economical pressure driving this. In the design of case study, it is important to plan and design how you are going to address the study and make sure that all collected data is relevant. Unlike a scientific report, there is no strict set of rules. So the most important part is making sure that the study is focused and concise. Otherwise, you will end up having to wade through a lot of irrelevant information. So it is best if you make yourself a short list of four or five bullet points that you are going to try and address during the study. If you make sure that all research refers back to these, then you will not be far wrong. With the case study, even more than a questionnaire or survey, it is important to be passive in your research. You are much more of an observer than an experimenter. And you must remember that even in a multi-subject case, each case must be treated individually and then cross-case conclusion can be drawn. Step one here is select a case. Once you have developed your problem statement and research question, you should be ready to choose the specific case that you want to focus on. A good case study should have the potential to provide new or unexpected insights into the subject, challenge or complicate existing assumptions and theories, propose practical course of action to resolve a problem, open up new direction for future research. If your research is more practical in nature and aims to simultaneously investigate an issue as you solve it, consider conducting action research instead. Unlike quantitative or experimental research, a strong case study does not require a random or representative sample, which we have already studied in the previous chapters. In fact, case studies often deliberately focus on unusual, neglected, or outline cases, which may shed new light on the research problem. So example of an outline case study. So in 1960s, we have a lot of case studies that was discovered to have extremely low rates of heart diseases compared to the US average. It became an important case study for understanding previously neglected causes of heart disease. So here, however, you can also choose a more common or representative case study to exemplify a particular category, experience or phenomenon. Next is build a theoretical framework. While case study focus more on concrete detail than general theories, they should usually have some connection with theory in the field. This way, the case study is not just an isolated description, but is integrated into existing knowledge about the topic. It might aim to exemplify a theory by showing how it explains the case under investigation. Next, expand on a theory by uncovering new concepts and ideas that need to be incorporated. Then, challenge a theory by exploring an outlier case that doesn't fit with established assumptions. To ensure that your analysis of the case has a solid academic grounding, you should conduct a literature review of sources related to the topic and develop a theoretical framework. This means identifying key concepts and theories to guide your analysis and interpretation. A very important step here also, which is also important in research questions or drafting your research thesis, collect your data. 
So we have already studied there are different methods to collect data. And there are many different research methods you can use to collect data on your subject. Case studies tend to focus on qualitative data using methods such as interviews, observation, primary and secondary, newspaper, article, photograph, etc. Sometimes a case study will also collect quantitative data. So, example of mixed method case study. For a case study of a wind farm development in a rural area, you could collect quantitative data on employment rates and business revenue and collect collective data on local people's perception and experience and then analyze and national media coverage of the development. The aim is to gain as thorough an understanding as possible of the case, its context. Next is describe and analyze the case. In writing up the case study, you need to bring together all the relevant aspects to give as complete a picture as possible of the subject. How you report your finding depends on the type of research you are doing. Some case studies are structured like a standard scientific paper or thesis with separate section or chapters for the methods, result, and discussion. Others are written in a more narrative style, aiming to explore the case from various angles and analyze its meaning and implications. For example, you can use textual analysis or discourse analysis. In all cases, though, make sure to give contextual details about the case connected back to the literature and theory and then discuss how it fits into wider pattern or debates. We'll further deeply understand how to analyze the result now.